It's a big lake. It's huge. It's almost like an ocean. Do you think most people know that you can't see across the lake? Hmm. There were people in California that when we talked about looking out from Chicago across the lake and not being able to see Michigan, they were like blown away. Really? Yeah. So last week we sailed from Racine up into Milwaukee. And this time we were planning on going from Racine all the way up the lake to somewhere over here, potentially to Muskegon. Pentwater was the other option. So that is 20, 40, 60. That looks to be just about 70 miles to Pentwater. Because Racine to Milwaukee is as the crow flies is less than 20 miles. But the other day, what did we do? We went... We did like 30 miles, didn't we? We probably came out to here and then came back. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we're off. What? Yeah, now that looks a lot beefier. How Two, far were we off by? Four, six... 50%? <laughs> yeah, Pentwater's 100 miles. Instead of what we thought, what, what 70? Well, yeah. So, somebody set up the compass wrong. Oh. We won't say who. <laughs> now that means we get to look at this book. Lake Michigan, Ports O'Call. Because we know where we're going now. Pentwater, 92. Well, that looks nice. Oh, look at this. Wash your worries away in this picturesque port of call. Okay, time to get to work. Enough of this playing around. We bought this boat to live aboard, and that required a number of different changes to the way the boat was set up. We couldn't possibly understand everything that we needed to change right away, but we knew we needed to make sure we had confidence in our ground tackle. We measured and marked our anchor chain and added seizing wire to our anchor shackle. Last week, Lauren had ripped out the microwave, which was hardwired into the back of this outlet. We used to have a microwave right here. We're never gonna use it because we wanna be on anchor. And we put our drawer in and realized that this 120 cabling that uh, goes to the outlet prevents the drawer from sliding all the way back in. So I needed to move that cabling and there's absolutely no way that I could fit a full-size drill in that little space. I just spent the last 45 minutes climbing into the bow pulpit of my neighbor's boat to help him install his new anchor windlass. So that's why I'm looking a little scuzzy. But in return, he went next door to my other neighbor's boat and got me a 90 degree angle drill. Let's see if this is gonna fit. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah? That's what I found. Sister. Okay, perfect. Thanks okay. so much. Sure. Yeah. And I've got this really awesome neighbor, Tom, who keeps finding short, fat, big drill bits for me to use. Here, watch this. These guys have been coming down the river today, and, uh, the current's moving real quick.
guys gave us this sail bag as we were walking out of the marina the other day. The sail was a jib. I'm gonna see if it fits on our boat. It'd be pretty cool. Hey, will you come on the please? I would love your opinion. Okay. I've got three photos of the kitchen I'm trying to choose from. And I only have 10 total. So I've got this one I know I'm gonna have because that showcases the dining room or the eating area. And for a run <laughs> and I'm off to work mm -hmm. maybe you should work in the cockpit because look at how beautiful it is outside oh that's gorgeous it's cold yeah it got chilly perfect night for a run really Got there. A baby tea kettle. Baby tea kettle. A tea kettle for babies. <laughs> that makes one half liter, but it is 120 volt, so we can't use it when we're underway. Except if we use an inverter, the one that we use in the car when we plug in our computers oh. into the DC uh, outlet. Well, did you look to see how many amps that is and how many amps the inverter? That's a great question. I didn't. I just went off a review that someone said, yeah, we just plug it into a little inverter. Oh. So. That's the perfect size, though. That's all that matters. Doesn't matter if we can use it or not. <laughs> oh, wow, this is tiny. That's our smoothie maker. <laughs> we got a smoothie maker for babies. <laughs> oh, my goodness, it's so small. Oh, it's pretty cool, though. Pull start it like an engine? Yeah, exactly. So why did you get this pull start food processor? Well, so we were considering, we were very close to getting the Vortex Blender. Basically, the Vortex Blender takes a really long time and is a lot of manual labor, which is not bad, but if there's gonna be a huge barrier to entry every time we wanna use it, we might not use it very often, so. And a bunch more money, right? It was. This one it was, was only like 20 bucks? Yeah, this was 20 bucks and that one was 100. So if this doesn't work out, we cool. give it to some child who needs a smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> some baby. <laughs> and the reason we're getting this is that it doesn't require electricity, right? That's correct. Because we don't have solar. We don't have solar. Or wind. Or wind. And our alternator is very small. Yep. So we're kind of SOL right now with power. Here's the power. Right here. We're going to build those biceps. First big boat project to make a new shelf over this drawer, pull out this GFCI and replace it, and to rerun that wire so that this drawer would fit in. And I needed to get that 90 degree angle drill. Well, now our drawer slides all the way back. Turns out I didn't actually need it at all because we're replacing that light that is over the uh, galley sink that is both 120 and 12 volt with just a 12 volt LED strip. Long story short, I'm undoing my work that I did yesterday, but such is life. So I've got my LED strips that I just wired up. It's gonna go right about there. So the boat came with this two-person kayak. This was our only tender. Before we anchored out, we had to make sure the kayak was usable as a dinghy. Hold up. Hold up. 
Say that again. What did I just ask you? Did you read the instructions? You asked me if I read the instructions. Uh huh. And you said. And then I asked you, would you have read the instructions before you started filling right. this Right. And what did you say? I said probably not, yeah, but. Yeah, exactly. Inflate your kayak in the following order. Failure to follow these instructions may cause damage to your kayak. All right, yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what's Chiba want? I don't know. Patented kayak canoe paddle swap so I don't get wet. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> it's six strokes and you're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this would not make a very good thingy, but it's six strokes upstream. Imagine six strokes upstream on the Mississippi. It's pretty fun if you just want to grab a beer and paddle nowhere, but if we needed to use this to get from our boat on anchor to shore, through any sort of waves or... This would not work. This would not work. Not to mention 20 minutes to inflate this thing with our foot pump. And it weighs like Before 100 pounds. Yeah. I think we need a new tender. Oh, this light's so good. I don't know, that's what I was saying. Jeez. 